Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and just this morning I finished reading Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. This, trans this is translated by John E. Woods, and uh, it is a, a, a dense, complex, um, difficult novel, and I'm going to try my best to uh, give some of my thoughts on some of the particulars in the book, but I do have some uh, general thoughts that I would like to uh, start with. Now, of the great um, writers that, that we think of in the, the 20th, 20th century, uh, Thomas Mann and uh, Proust, James Joyce, um, maybe The Man Without Qualities, Robert Musil's uh, Man Without Qualities, uh, and the other other books like that, the the giants of the twentieth century. For my money, although Thomas Mann is certainly um, a, a, an author to to grapple with, I do find that he is the most welcoming of of the modernists in the twentieth century. He seems to um, invite the reader. Um, in a way that um, Proust, um, I, I, I love Proust, but it does feel like he gets carried away uh, with his own voice and kind of forgets that there's other people at the dinner party. Uh, James Joyce uh, seems to um, find enjoyment or pleasure in um, making things confounding, making things more difficult. Now, Thomas Mann, I feel, is someone that is grappling with big ideas, big topics, and he's aware uh, of the, the sprawling scope that he is um, endeavoring in his novels. And he ha just has a way of talking to the reader and saying, we're going we're gonna to be walking through this together. I don't, I don't know if I'm expressing myself very well, but he's just a very, for how difficult the novel is, um, he, he is very inviting. Now, of course, Dr. Faustus is um, a retelling of the, the Faust legend. Of course, there's um, Faust by Goethe, and this book is a lot, there's a lot of things going on. This is about a 2,000 page book somehow condensed into about 500. And I'm going to start with um, what I feel is just one of the most interesting aspects of, of this book. The full title is Dr. Faustus, The Life of the German Composer Adrian Liverkun, as Told by a Friend. And so this is a fictional biography. We have, we have a fictional character, Adrian, who's going to be this brilliant composer. And the, the book is written by the fictional uh, biographer. His name is uh, Severnus, I believe. Now I'm forgetting. And he tells us, we're, we're, we're listening to the biographer uh, tell us what he's setting out to do. He wants to tell us uh, the life of his friend. And as you get along in the book, as you're reading it, the pages become so multi multi-faceted. Um, is, it, is it a novel? Is it a biography? Is it a philosophical treatise? Is it um, theories, um, tracks on musical theory? Is it scientific papers about uh, the cosmos and the expansion of the universe? Is it, um, bio, is it essays on um, aquatic biological life and um, strange fish that live all the way in the depths of the sea that um, are able to bioluminesce? Um, a huge portion of this book is an essay form, and a huge portion of this book is 
philosophical dialogue and it is dense and it's um, serious and researched and Thomas Mann or the biographer um, is not talking down to the reader he expects um, an, an engagement and he, he gives the, the reader um, the benefit of being an intelligent enough to follow along. Now, one of the aspects that I love about the book in general, especially in the first half, um, for all of the seriousness, for all the complexity, um, for all of the um, looming history that's about to start raining down um, on this book, our character, um, the, the composer Adrian and the biographer are uh, childhood friends. And it's right at the um, right at the edge of the century. We're about to go in uh, to the beginning of the twentieth century, and they're uh, they're German. They're in Germany, and we get this dichotomy of, of course, what Thomas Mann uh, knows writing this book um, in the nineteen forties, the biographer who's writing this after the death of his friend Adrian, and then the characters themselves that are living. In innocence, they, they they do not see um, the coming of the world wars and the the rise of uh, the Third Reich and propaganda and nation states and uh, political up, upheaval and and evil, um, fascism, dictatorships. Um, they they are just blissfully unaware of what is coming. And they, Adrian especially, um, takes a liking to music. And uh, as a, a brilliant, precocious uh, child, um, is wonderfully his childhood is wonderfully described. It's just a, a, a child that's bored in class because he's excelling, and he's also not especially interested or invested, which it, uh, it just frustrates the teachers, this brilliant child that is also um, aloof. But he meets um, a composer um, that has come into town, he's a stutter, and he gives these lectures, these music theory lectures, and it's substantial. We, we, we get into portions of the book uh, repeatedly, uh, where we take these deep dives, and there's four lectures, and we read them essentially in their entirety. Uh, we're reading about music theory, and um, one of the one of the course names or the lecture names was "Why does not um, one of the I can't remember the number, but um, why does one of Beethoven's sonatas not have a fourth movement and then we re read this lecture now I'm getting to a point um, for all of the seriousness and complexity and all, all of the things that are going on in this book there is still a lightness of touch and there's still these um, flashes of playfulness um, really uh, actually uh, Lawrence Stern is uh, specifically referenced, but also um, um, uh, Henry Fielding, uh, the, the, the way that he would engage with the reader, um, and James Boswell. Th th this book is uh, extremely Boswellian um, in, in the way that it's treating the biography uh, and the subject of the biography. The biographer is also one of the main uh, characters, but um, Moments like this happen where um, we're reading 40 pages, 50 pages about music theory, and we're just reading the lecture. Um, and we get to the end of the chapter, and it's an incredibly long chapter. And the biographer, Severnus, uh, if that's his name, I can't remember, takes a, a moment uh, to step back and say, I know, that, that, that was a long 
chapter. And you might have even been tempted to just skip ahead and just skip to this chapter. And he says something along the lines of, maybe you should go back and, <laughs> and try to catch up with class. And throughout the book, the, the, the biographer is, is being playful with, with the reader. He'll, he'll stop and say, I, I know I'm getting off of topic. I need to, I need to stay on topic talking about uh, the life of Adrian. And it's delightful and extremely welcome when those moments, um, percolate and pop up and, um, uh, just a, a little bit of, um, le levity, uh, with all of the serious things that are going on. Now, of course, this is a, a retelling of uh, Faust. So, uh, Adrian, the the German composer, um, as he's a, a young student um, studying and practicing, he um, goes into theology, and we we get b b biblical stories, and we get um, medieval legends and tales, and um, all, all of these. Um, esoteric and um, deep dives into worlds and worlds of subjects while he's in school and also traveling. But there's a darkness looming and one of the complexities and what, are the, what makes this book brilliant, it's, it's, it's just an unbelievably brilliant novel, book, whatever it is, is that there's layers of this onslaught of doom. Um, we are gonna learn that Adrian either really did or believes himself to have sold his soul to the devil for 24 years. And for 24 years, he's gonna have um, unbridled brilliance. He's gonna be the most brilliant composer and he composes symphonies and uh, operas, and um, and we we spend time with him working on these operas, and of course it's just saturated with the the, the music theory. Um, he adapted Love Love's Labor Love Labor's Lost uh, by Shakespeare, and he has a, a symphony about the cosmos and a symphony about the apocalypse, and then. Finally, when we get to the very end of the book, um, uh, a retelling of the legend of Faust. Our biographer is very clear with the reader um, that, that this is a lifelong friend, a childhood friend. He's telling his story, um, and he's trying to be as truthful as he can with firsthand information. He's um, very explicit that he was a witness. He was, he was in the room. They were walking in the park uh, together. These are the conversations that they had. Um, and so the periods where Adrian is um, traveling or in solitude, um, there are gaps in, in the story. Or he's very clear to say, this is um, what I've been told has happened, but I, I wasn't there. And there is a brilliant chapter uh, right up there with Ivan's Nightmare. Um, and it's this manuscript, it's this document that Adrian has. He makes a point to say that th this, is, this is a document that the biographer has um, written by Adrian at a time when he was uh, traveling and they were apart. Um, and he, he rewrites it. He, he doesn't want to separate himself from this manuscript, this document. So he, he's painstakingly rewriting on his own biography uh, what, what the, the details of this terrifying letter uh, document is. And it's Adrian, in his own hand, writing uh, this interaction that he has with the devil. And the biographer is terrified and frightened with every aspect of this, uh, every every implication, every, every aspect that you could um, approach uh, the, the writing of the document. Uh, did he really believe it? 
Is this something that really happened? Or is this a product of his imagination? And how terrifying it is that he would be um, even able to conjure up uh, these images. And there, there's, quite, there's, there's also quite a demonic book. Um, but it's the moment where the devil and Adrian um, sit down together. The, the, the devil appears in his room and he, he's, he's described uh, physically. But as the conversation goes, the um, the appearance of the devil changes much like the way a cloud changes as it passes through the sky and so moment to moment um, Adrian will look over and, and the the devil's uh, visage is totally altered he looks like a different person his hair is a different color he didn't transform and like a whiz bang but just imperceptibly just um, constantly moving into different images and there is a pact and demonic things uh, do start happening there's um, um, doctors of Adrian's he, he suffers from migraines his entire life um, dying there's auto defenestration eerie eerie images but there is like I said layers of doom and so it's not just uh, Adrian who sells, sells his soul to the devil uh, we also have the rise of the Third Reich and these world wars coming and it's bittersweet at the at the beginning of the novel, when when we're in, in his student days, and there are his uh, uh, friends and classmates and uh, fraternal brothers and they and the the biographer Severnus, they have these sparkling philosophical conversations about uh, aesthetics and ethics, life and death and love and friendship and just bursting with expression and opinion and po po uh, varied political ideas. And it's so thoughtful and uh, articulate and unique and uh, different people have different points of views and they can uh, debate and have uh, lively, friendly, respect respectful conversations. And we have the, the rise of fascism just right in the back a whole whole nation um, that is going to just be consumed with pro that was Ben <laughs> uh, he's on the tractor um, with uh, propaganda and Nazism and fascism and um, the, the rights and humanities are just Humanity is stripped away from a whole population of people, and people become brainwashed. And there, there's confusion at the beginning of these wars with all of the propaganda. These are Germans, and there's there's a war, and they want to be on the side of right, and they want to be patriotic and do their national duty. And this book um, just uh, mashes through these things. Um, and we have our biographers coming out the other side, and. and um, telling us what was happen happening and the characters that had no idea what was happening and also the perspective of the biographer looking at it um, with um, foresight and know knowing, knowing the future um, as it were and so um, Germany and this German composer uh, in a way have both made a deal with the devil um, now um, they're, they're, they're at the, towards the end of the book it gets dramatic and there are um, really terrible um, tragic sad scenes um, the plot is almost beside the point um, it's interesting to think about something like uh, other writers that are known for their digressions. Uh, so Victor Hugo, um, 
maybe Tolstoy. Um, this is a book where um, it's it's all interwoven. There, there's no way to abridge this book. The the digressions um, move in and out of being the um, it, it's the fiber of the book. The, the the digressions and the personality of the biographer uh, and the story of Adrian it, it's all in, interwo interwoven the, the history of uh, the 20th century um, in Germany going through these world wars um, in incredibly rich complex um, difficult to talk about <laughs> um I, I read it just at the right time. Um, last week, I had a weekend where I got through 200 pages of really great reading time, and that the momentum uh, kept with me. Um, for, for as much of a challenge as the book is, um, if, if you start following the rhythm and having an idea of what the expectations are, are gonna be for the reader, it's captivating and surprising. It's, it's, a, it's a book that, um, page to page, you don't you don't know. Like I said, if we're going to be talking about um, f physics or stories in the Old Testament or biology or uh, long portions of music theory, uh, thoughts on Beethoven and Mozart and, and Bach and, and and so on, um, are we going to spend time with the biographer? Are we going to be spending more time with um, Adrian. Is the is the devil going to be reappearing? All of these great things to um, constantly look forward to in this book. Um, and um, it's not for everybody. Um, I loved it. Um, certainly a book um, <laughs> that rewards uh, rereading and rewards uh, just thinking about. Um, those are just some of my thoughts of uh, Dr. Faustus, um, the life of a German composer, Adrian Leverkin, as told by a friend. I love that. Uh, thank you for watching. Please let me know if you've uh, read it or read anything else by Thomas Mann. Um, there's so much more to talk about, but I'll, I'm going to end it here. So please leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching.